the brother of the Las Vegas shooter, Stephen Paddock, spoke to reporters just moments ago in Orlando. A word of caution, we understand there is some adult language being used here. Let's listen in. Um, I, someone texted me, the first thing is thank you, whoever texted me is my truck. So, <laughs> someone texted me, I don't know who, Reuters or somebody texted me, thank you, that, with an update that I didn't have, because I was, with, I took my mom to the doctor. How's your mom Supposedly doing? Supposedly, Steve, I'm sorry? How's your mom doing? She's okay, I mean... I mean, do you want that kind of background oh, real quick about my mom? I mean, my mom was born in the Depression. She's had a tough life. Her husband was an asshole, a total asshole. Uh, he ran off, left her with four kids. She raised four kids on a secretary salary in the, seven, you know, in the 60s and 70s. And some of us weren't real good kids. I mean, you guys are probably going to investigate me. I wasn't a wonderful human being when I was a kid. We were bad kids, okay? That's, you know, at some level. We were troublesome kids. We were, grew up poor on the side of the freeway in the San Fernando Valley in California. I, I don't want to, I mean, I don't want to go too much into this, but if, to how we were formed. I, <laughs> we're just people. The, my mom has had a tough life. And here's where it goes in, where it branches into Steve, the Steve that we knew. Steve made my mom wealthy. He, he's the one, he's the reason why she's, he's, it's not, he's not the only reason she did this herself, a lot of it, okay? But he helped make her retirement very comfortable. You know, he's the reason she's very, very comfortable right now. She wouldn't have been as comfortable because you don't make much money as a secretary in the 70s, raising four kids, okay? Steve is the reason that she has substantial, she has substantial funds right now and is comfortable. That's the Steve I, that's the Steve I know, okay? Now, the other thing is the, I, someone said that Mary, that, that Steve transferred $100,000. Woo, $100,000. We're, we're wealthy people. $100,000 isn't that much money, A, and I'm sorry if that hurts people or something, but $100,000 isn't that huge amount of money. He gambled that much through a machine in hours. I mean, we're, once again, you need to understand. That's what people need to understand, the level where some people live. I guess everybody thinks that everybody works at Taco Bell or something. Everybody doesn't work at Taco Bell. There's wealthy people who do this. If you're going to condemn Steve for being a high-stakes gambler, the hotels are not going to be very happy with you. Go find everybody. Go find everybody and interview them who has a card. If you're going to call Steve crazy for gambling the way he gambles, go find everybody at the hotels who has a. Have the hotels tell you everybody who's got a gold. You know he's got the highest level of membership card at, at a lot of these hotels. If these hotels say they don't know Steve, they're lying. But would that transfer indicate some sort of forethought, you think, maybe? Or was that, a, did he routinely send her money of the... My uh, mom? Or Mary Ann? He... The, Mary Lou? I'm sorry. Okay. Steve took care of the people he loved. He helped make me and my family wealthy. <laughs> I mean, he's the reason I was able to retire. Three years ago when I got really burnt out doing the job I did. I mean, this is the Steve we know, we knew. He's the people he loved, he took care of. He didn't have a lot of friends. You know, he was a private person. There's a story about that he's, oh, he kept his windows, his shades closed, and he didn't talk to me for the first three times he saw me walking in the neighborhood. Wow, that makes him really weird, doesn't it? He was a private guy. That's why you can't find out anything about him. That's why there's no pictures. Is, is he such a weirdo because he didn't have a Facebook page and posted 50,000 damn pictures of himself every day? Who's weird? Can you sympathize that people are maybe grasping for any I'm, sort of explanation? I'm, I'm not. I'm, believe me, I sympathize with everybody who's grasping. Who on this planet do you think is grasping for this understanding more than me?
okay? I mean, once again, my heart goes out in, I mean, my son called me today and he cried on the face. He's just crushed by this. <laughs> and it has nothing to do with him. Nothing. But he's just totally crushed by this. And I'm, I mean, this is why I'm not a crying kind of guy. I'm an old school kind of guy. My wife stayed home and raised my kids. I went out and earned the money. I'm an old school kind of guy. I'm, I'm the guy who takes care of everybody else. I'm, this crying thing is not my normal gig. Okay? I'm... I can't even process this yet, really. I mean, it's just started. I woke up this morning crying. It's like, okay, I'm, you know, today it's being noticed. Now, back to Steve. Enough about me. I was right about, I guess, that he's, you know, hopefully more being proved that, of course, Steve did this all by him. This is 100% Steve did this by himself. People can't seem to cope with that either, but Steve is a, was, was a, highly intelligent, highly successful person. He could have done anything he wanted to do. And he did, he made himself wealthy, he made us wealthy. He was a very successful person. He gambled for 20 plus years successfully. It's like a job to him. He did it mathematically. He did it because it was a way to have a fun life and and make and he didn't go poor doing it. Now that may have changed. I don't know. The hotels, the hotels, the, the hotels know. They know whether he lost money or something because he never would have gambled for a second without putting the card in. Because you don't get your points and stuff if you don't have your card in the machine. You don't get your comps. But still, no clue as to why he would do something. No like this. clue whatsoever. Here's the clue for the day. Someone says he transferred $100,000 to the Philippines. Mary Lou is, you know, they say she's Australian, I guess, but I mean, at the base, she's Filipino, I believe. I mean, I, <laughs> she's Filipino. I mean, I think because she might have, but she has a lot of relatives. I mean, they've been to the Philippines multiple times. I mean, she has relatives. He's, I mean, she went there to visit her family, and he went there and surprised her by showing up there. He loved Mary, I mean, he, he loved slash loves Mary Lou, even if, they broke up for some reason or something we find out and that I don't know. Would he have told me that? Maybe not yet. You know, that kind of thing. That's the, I mean, they make jokes about the guys on the golf course who, you know, golf for three hours and the wife asks them afterwards, you know, oh, what's, what's happening with his wife? He didn't talk about his wife. I mean, these are people who meet on the golf course every week. Okay, so, and, and people joked at me about that I didn't know whether Steve was married or not. Steve did anything he wanted to do whenever he wanted to do it. He was an independently wealthy, no ties attached guy. If he wanted to get on a plane and go to Japan and have sushi tomorrow, he did that. Now, he probably tried to get the casino to pay for it by saying he was gonna go to a casino there or something, but this will all come out when the, if the casinos aren't lying. They comp him, I mean, he got lots of money in comps. To have him gamble with them, they would comp him for lots, okay? So the $100,000 for Mary Lou, and it's what I sent back, I mean, I'll just try to say what I said before. That's the Steve I know, that's what's, that's something that makes sense. Steve would have wanted to take care of Mary Lou. Now this is my, I may be wrong for the day because I haven't talked to Mary Lou. I'm, we're not gonna, I mean, we're not gonna chase her. I mean, when she wants, to, if, she, if and when she wants to talk to us, we're here. But I mean, I, I don't know what the situation is because maybe Steve wouldn't have told me if they broke up because that's just the kind of, and for Steve breaking up is a fungible thing because he still knows and hangs out with occasionally and talks to and, you know, that kind of stuff, his relation, previous relationship people. There's no, I mean, it's not like he hates them when he breaks up with them kind of thing. I mean, from the experience. Eric, given what you know about your brother, what are the types of clues that you think will reveal why he did this? There are no types of clues. That's the problem. The clue that reveals Steve 
is that he transferred $100,000 to the Philippines to take care of Mary Lou. And you guys think he's an evil genius. How can you not think that it's very easy that he manipulated Mary Lou? Mary Lou's a smart lady, I'm not saying. But he could have very, e the reason they found this stuff in the, in the Mesquite house, he could have very easily not gone. He had multiple houses and any, ho I mean, a bunch of the hotels not any hotel, but many of the hotels, he walks in and says, give me a room. They give him a room for a week. Do you feel manipulated? Do you feel by Steve? Do you feel mis- Not in any way, shape, or form, okay. because I under, I, once again, the Steve I knew. Yeah. Here, okay, Steve's manipulation. It was fun to hang out with Steve because he was a rich guy who hung out in the hotels, okay? When, here's, a, I told this story already. When I drove out to pick my son up to bring him back here, we came back through Vegas to see Steve because I want my kids occasionally to see their uncle, you know, but we live on different coasts than that. So when we're in the vicinity, we try to see him. I mean, I would have seen him more recently this year. We were out in the motorhome in Yellowstone, but we were gonna go by Reno and see him, and but we didn't make it because it snowed on us and da 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 da. So I didn't see him. But we, I, with my son, we stopped. We ate in one of the best, in the Fusion restaurant, I highly recommend the, the Fusion restaurant, I can't think of the name, but the Fusion restaurant at the Wynn. We ate thousands of dollars of sushi, comped. You know, you can find the date because when they look at Steve's records, his credit card paid for the tip and that's it. And we ate thousands of dollars of sushi. So it was fun to be with Steve. If you were Steve's friend, he, would spend money on you. But did he have a lot of friends? No, that's, once again, that's where we're getting to with Mary Lou. That's why that makes sense. I mean, as, as what must be that Steve was cratering into this hell, that he wanted to take care of Mary Lou. He sent some money where it's available to her. I don't know if they can claw it back or da da da. Maybe he, I mean, you know, if it was Steve, he probably sent it to a bank where it got turned into cash in the Philippines or something and was withdrawn or something because he probably was. Steve, if you want to think Steve's an evil genius, how can you not think it was easy enough for him to come up with a scheme to take the money and have it available for Mary Lou in a place where she would be safer to be? He wanted her, and I may, this is today's thing I might be wrong about. He wanted, he manipulated her to be completely as far away from this and safe when he did this because Maybe if he wanted to, I mean, he wanted to make sure she had money. She wanted to make sure the same exact thing. The first thing that came to my mind was that she didn't get shot because she was walking through the hotel when the cops came in and her picture started flashing or something. It must feel so ironic that he would take such great care of her, yet no, such so disregard this, for Well, others. the I, ironic, yes. I guess that's not exactly, I don't know, a better word for it, but yes, but... The people he loved, he took care of, and as he was descending into hell, he wanted to try to take care of her. Is that why this is so hard to wrap your head around? That's exactly. The Steve I know, this is like he knew he had brain cancer and was gonna die in six months. He's not the kind of guy who would have gone into the hospital for treatment. He would have died. Now, how this, I mean, once again, how this happened, that what he did, but he would have taken care of Mary Lou because he took care of the people who he was friends with, who he was with. And, you know, if you think he's such an evil genius, he, and how could he not just manipulate Mary Lou? They could have not gone to their house in Mesquite because they stopped in Reno. And then she flew down to see her parents or her, her, her kid or something, and he flew over here. And they, they I mean, there's, he, him getting on a plane and flying somewhere is like you going to Publix. I mean, it's something he just does every every week. You use the phrase evil genius. Do you think that he I'm, was? Once, I'm sorry. I mean, that's the thing I shouldn't have said. But that's what people are, I mean, that he's this, you know. But he's a highly intelligent what, I mean, there's absolutely no, and this is the other part that I want to stress with this, that it, I mean, it doesn't matter that they won't chase people, but people are saying, oh, he must have had help. Steve had no help. Steve didn't take help. It did not take a village for Steve. Steve was an arm. I'm sorry. Please don't. 
I'm using a colloquial, t I was about to use a colloquial term that would besmudge one of the armed forces. Steve was a standalone guy, okay? Steve, if, if you wanted to hang out with Steve, you hung out with Steve, but you had to understand Steve was a little quirky. I, here, I mean, here's the story, you know, here's how Steve is. I would go, you know, when I was flying or whatever, if he was in town and I happened to be flying over, I'd stop in where, you know, we'd go to the hotel and stay at the hotel for a couple days or something and sit under the cabana or something like that. But with Steve, it was, it was like, he'd spend, you know, he'd, I'd get, I'd get to be partake of a bunch of thousands of dollars of comps on the hotel. But Steve would say, oh, can you go get me a sandwich? Well, of course, I knew. I mean, someone might not understand that, you know, that that's the cost of being with Steve, is that you have to, you would go get him a sandwich if he needed a sandwich. And, because Steve didn't want to, you know, this, this nonsense about how did he get the guns into the, you take a hundred dollar bill and you hand, oh, I'm sorry, you take a hundred dollar bill and you hand it to the bell cap and they go, oh, Mr. Paddock, oh, hi. Oh, you got a couple bags today? Okay, we'll take those up. I mean, there's no magic there. You never knew him to be an angry person. If you want to, if you're going to call him crazy, if, you, if, if we were going to call him crazy because he's an angry person, then you had better call everybody on the news from 4 o'clock to 12 o'clock at night a crazy person. Okay? That's the end of the day. Was he an angel? Of course he wasn't an angel. Did he about people who annoyed the crap out of him? Of course he did. Well, uh, but I'm not talking about that. I mean, I, I, I you know, I see. find you find me anything anywhere. People who who have no reason to tell you that he was a a nice guy. People who used to pay him rent. I mean, the story about the about our apartments that we have. The guy says, "Oh, and by the way, you know, the place sucked when we moved it, when we bought it. We fixed it up and made a nice place for these people to live." And Steve gave them. I mean, gave them cheap rent because we wanted happy people, nice people in our apartments. He said, yeah, he had a quirky sense of humor. Well, what the hell is a quirky sense of humor? People watch movies where they butcher little kids. What the hell are you, you this is why everybody, I and mean, here's my diatribe for the day. This is what everybody's so scared about right now. When Steve can do this, we are in deep because there's just nothing there. You find me where someone who's like Steve does this, I hope the hell they find when they do the autopsy that there's a tumor in his head or something. Because if they don't, we're all in trouble. Because this is, Steve was just, I mean, Steve's dead. You can't say anything bad about him anymore because who cares? Say whatever you want about him. I don't, it's not gonna hurt me. Something horrible happened to my brother and whatever happened to him in his head that made him go over the edge like this, you don't, you know, when the lights go out at night and you lay your head on your pillow, this is you and me. I mean, come on guys. This is what everybody's so scared about right now. Is an autopsy being done? I sure hope so, but we have no control. Someone asked me about, you know, do I know what they're, I mean, my mom wants his, her son's ashes. I don't have any idea how to, nobody's contacted me. I mean, who knows what they do. Are we gonna have a, are we gonna have a, a funeral? Steve wasn't into funerals. Steve was into being alive today. If you wanted to have a, if you wanted to have a party, Go hang out while people are alive. That was how Steve lived. Funerals weren't. You've been able to speak with us so much, and you've been so good about talking to us. How have you been able to keep such a level head throughout all this? I know you said you had a stressful job, but because you've been able I'm to... an old-fashioned guy, my life has been. You know, uh, I'm going to say my life hasn't been wonderful. And then some poor guy who's, you know, got cancer and his mom, you know, blah, 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 you know, someone's got a worse life than me. I'm, I have 
lived, and I don't want to talk about me because I'm just a, I'm, and this is what sucks, I'm going to use the same terms, I'm just a guy. Here's Eric Paddock. I was the youngest son. I grew up with a single mom. Steve was like, the dad surge. I mean, he took me camping. <laughs> I had a tough time. I did dumb stuff when I was a teenager, okay? I didn't, I have no criminal record or any of that stuff because I'm smarter than the average bear. And I knew to hang out with people who were dumber than I was and who would get caught faster, okay? Bottom line, that's how it works. Have you asked yourself why, I mean, you really love, you know, Vegas and the gaming life and, and why would he choose a casino to, I mean, not, not, not that you know, but have you asked yourself why he would take a he loves so well, much? Well, of course, and absolutely. It's not that he, Steve didn't love it. It was a job. I did a job for 30 years that I wasn't all that crazy about, but I made a lot of money, okay? I didn't love my job. I pretty much hated my job, but I made a lot of money. I, I created four children successfully. I, I have a house. I have a retirement. I get to go drive around in my cheap little motorhome now. It's, it's not, Steve didn't love the casino. The casino was a, a means to an end. What would you say? The casino to him was like a job. It was like a job at Toyota in Japan where you live in the Toyota apartments across the street. And then you go to the Toyota factory to work. That's what the casino, that's all the casino was to him. It was a place where you lived and they were nice to you and you made, and you could get it paid for by playing slots. What would you say to families who are trying to get What some I'm saying, I'm, cr I'm crying. You know, you say, how am I holding up? I woke up, you know, and once again, it's, I'm not a crying kind of guy. I'm the guy, I'm the guy who helps everybody else. Go around and ask my neighbor, the lady who pulled in, I helped her husband pull a tree off his house and stand up his, I'm the kind of guy who goes around and helps. I'm just that, I mean, sorry, I'm just that kind of guy. Was I, I'm extremely lucky in life, you know? I, but I work for it a lot. I mean, go find my history. I worked a billion hours and, and was not home with my family and, and et cetera, et cetera. I'm, but I'm not guilty for being successful. No, but for all the rest of the people, for all the, here, I mean, once again, I'm just to know please. What you say to the families of the victims who are trying the family, to, to understand, to get insight. Think about Steve however you have to think about Steve. Here's my, here's my statement. If we have to have a funeral for Steve, here's how pragmatic, this is pr how pragmatic I am. If having a funeral for Steve and letting all these people come and spit on his grave will make them feel better in any way, shape or form. I'm, I mean, I'm using the far end here. Come on guys, give me a little, give me a little stretch here. If having a funeral for Steve would help anybody I will do whatever is possible. I mean, I'm, my heart is torn, is destroyed for all these people. I, but I can't tell you why Steve did what he did. It doesn't, it's so far over the side of the cliff from Steve that I knew. Did he grouse about people? Yes. If you went into, I mean, you guys, come on. If you, you go in, do any of you guys ever gamble at all? When you gamble and you win, you're all happy. It doesn't matter if you're up $500. When you lose, you're not happy. So, you know, you're unhappy that you lost because you think you lost. But there's no, that's not, I mean, Steve didn't gamble that way. Steve gambled as a job. Eric, what? What's the status of the FBI and, and your family? They right? haven't talked to me at all. I know nothing from them. They aren't, I have to find out stuff about that. I from, you were working with federal investigators. I was I yesterday. <laughs> Nobody has, I mean, I found out about this $100,000 on the web, uh, somebody texted me. If it's true, I'm sorry if it's not true, but once again, it, I mean, here I can talk to that because it fits exactly into what I would expect from Steve, that he took care of Mary Lou. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, 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 the fact that he took care of Mary Lou and then killed all these people, there's just no connection there for me. I don't understand how Steve got to that point. That's why, I mean, once again, and maybe we'll never know, I don't know, but we, I mean, I'm praying. I mean, and even, there's no, so he lost $4 million, so Mary Lou broke up with him. 
that that's not even that that wouldn't even do it for Steve because he'd go on. We've had setbacks and we're in the real estate business in LA back when the bottom fell out of it. We almost lost all of our savings. We just went on. I mean, there's no, I mean, we're pragmatic people. We just, I mean, we, we, we keep going. That's why this not keeping going, there was something that happened to Steve that I, I'm not even trying to excuse anything or anything. But something happened that drove him into the pit of hell. And, and he did this. Uh, but it, You're hoping that there's some autopsy will reveal something to explain. I'm praying for at least some data points. Because otherwise, it's, it's you know, the, the bug in Men in Black put on a Steve suit and went and did this. I mean, there's no other, <laughs> there's no other rationalization. I mean, he didn't plan this for 35 years. There's, it just, he didn't plan this for 35 years. This happened to my brother. Whatever caused him to do this happened in a very, once again, I don't know what a very short time period is to you, but this happened over the course of months. It happened over the course of months. Yeah. And here's what I say to the people, I mean, tr I mean, if they're trying to understand Steve, I mean, maybe no one will ever understand Steve. But, you know, this is what I'll carry for the rest of my life. You know, had I called him back instead of texting, would I have heard something in his voice? Would I have, would, I, would he have given up something? Would he have, I don't know, I can't say. That's what I'm gonna carry for the rest of my life that maybe I could have intervened but I don't, I, I, that's pure conjecture. For the people who have been affected by this, if there was anything I could do to make this better, if there was anything I could do to make this better, I would do it. And I, I'm, I mean, nobody wants to hear this, but I'm as touched by this, my brother's dead, who, who wasn't this guy who did this? Uh, you know, he's dead. And I liked my brother. <laughs> he was a good guy. And I know this is, you know, nobody wants to hear this, but damn. I, you know, if you knew Steve, once again, people 20 years ago who have no reason to say anything nice about him or anything, or say nice things about him. People who don't even know him hardly. Uh, I'm. This is a horror, just a, a horror story in every possible way. It's the bad twist at the end of a good movie, you know, at the end of a good movie or something. It's, it's, how in the hell did this happen? Hey, Eric, what do you know, what facts do you know about the last weeks or months of Stephen's life? What, do you know anything or is it just blank? I don't know anything exactly specific about the last month of Steve's life. Except that he called my mom and talked to her. And I don't even know specifically he had multiple residents and he stayed in hotels. I don't even know necessarily where he called from because I just, I don't ask those things. You don't know how long Mary Lou had been in the Philippines either. No. Right but here's Eric's, you know, here's another Eric's conjecture for sure for the day. What they normally did, <laughs> they drove into Vegas and they stayed at the hotel for a night, had dinner, relaxed, et cetera, and then they flew out to go on a cruise, or she flew out to go to see her daughter, or, or to see her relatives overseas, or she, she went off to do something. He usually sat around the casino and gambled, because that's kind of what he did. Yesterday you were wondering about where he got the automatic weapons. It's come out that he purchased two bump stocks, which are things that- Those aren't, I mean, those are, Things that you add to a gun that don't that only make two, you know, sort of semi-automatic weapons, sort of automatic. I mean, I don't know. They showed pictures of guns. You know, if he had that many guns, did he have real? I mean, once again, this is who knows. Did he have fully automatic weapons? The, I, I don't know this anymore. The feds don't aren't telling me anything. So, you know, the pictures you're what you're hearing from the feds is more than they're telling me because, of course, they don't want to tell me anything because in case I'm lying to them or something. What do you think of him making that purchase? 
that he bought the stuff to make it automatic? Well, of course. He probably, again, do you want to understand Steve? Yeah, that's why we're all Okay, here. Steve bought those bump stock things. Were they attached to guns when they found them? All I know is they were Okay, find out if they were attached to guns. He may have had them in the bag because he tried them and didn't like them. Have any of you ever fired an automatic weapon? It's not fun. You can go do it for, you know, you give them some money and they'll let you go shoot a machine gun in, in Las Vegas, okay? It's not fun. I mean, you have to be a little weird because it beats the crap out of you. It's, and Steve was beat up and a little, you know, he was, he had, his knees were sore and he'd fallen in the casino and his leg hurt and all this stuff. So he wasn't gonna hold you know, they say, how did Steve get the stuff up to the to the, the room? Steve didn't get the stuff up to the room. He gave a kid a hundred bucks and the kid brought it up on a little gold trolley. Steve didn't carry anything up to the room, okay? The, and if the pictures show up showing me wrong there, then it's, uh, you know, I'll be a little surprised because Steve didn't carry stuff. Did you boys grow up around guns? Who? Did you and your brother? Not in any way, shape, or form until we were late teenage did we ever my mom's not into guns at all her husband went to jail for robbing banks with a machine gun my mom is not into guns for some reason <laughs> but you know steve would have taken that silly bump stock thing whatever it is and tried it but if you have to hold the gun i mean they're saying he had tripods that would be exactly what steve would do because you can't hold a machine gun and shoot you're not going to, a normal person is not going to hold a machine gun and shoot a hundred rounds out of it. It'd rip your shoulder off. If you've ever shot a real rifle, you don't pull the trigger on a 223 a bunch of times. It, I mean, I have a fake shoulder, but it's not because of guns, but I could not even shoot a 223 if I wanted to anymore. So, and I don't own one. I don't own a, you know, a semi audit well, I do. I own a 22 caliber little semi-automatic rifle that I taught my children how to shoot little targets at the range with. But you, you don't shoot an automatic weapon. That is Steve. Steve said, I mean, this is what's so, this is why, like I said, it's the insanity of it. When Steve decided to do this, he still had his thinking brain on because he did all this stuff. He procured this stuff. He got I mean, he would get a tripod to put the damn gun on because then you can easily fire the gun. That makes sense. I mean, these are just logical things. This is no great leap. Do you I mean, he, his relationship with Mary Liz, like where they met, what they, what they were like together? He met her. She was the host. She was, I mean, someone refreshed my memory. She was a hostess at the Atlantis. Steve was a big fish at the Atlantis in Reno. We what were, were they like we, together? they were adorable. Steve's this big, she's this tiny thing. He, uh, he loved her. I mean, <laughs> I mean, he doted on her. I mean, it's like I said, but you're not going to, maybe she has pictures of this, maybe her side of the family or the kids took pictures of this, but you don't, once again, I, we're getting our first reaction from the family of the Las Vegas shooter. This is the brother of the Las Vegas shooter who clearly is still processing the actions of his brother, that this he was behind the worst shooting in recent U.S. history. We are learning that, according to the brother, he was highly intelligent, highly successful, and very generous to his friends and family, and that he came from a family of four. His mother was a secretary, and his father had left the kids alone.